This video was brought to you by Marcus Biel, Elbil Mac, a battery planner, stolen by Camp Power and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house and behind me here, you see probably the most hyped up car in 2024. It's Volvo EX30. I don't know what's up with this car, why people are so crazy about it. It is actually a Chinese car now, it's from Geely. So, okay, but anyway, so. Yeah, I have charged it to 100%. And we're gonna do a range test. Okay, first, let's see. This is what I got, the interior. Huh, nice. Wait, I need to plug in the, yeah. Okay, no, no, I can show you. Supposedly, the 12 volt is in the back. Yeah, so I have to plug in here because I have some 12 volt. I, I, I use the, the inverter here so I can charge my camcorder. So yeah. You see, this is uh, like the smart hashtag. I'm not sure, is this hashtag one or hashtag three? I feel like it's the hashtag one's brother from another mother. So it has the 60, well, hashtag one, hashtag three has 66 kilowatt hour battery. This has 69 kilowatt hour and also charges a little bit faster. So I'm going to do a battery test to see how many kilowatt hour get out of the battery. Uh, yeah, so you see, we just finished charging it to 100%. It claims 450 kilometers. And then, yeah, here we have car scanner. Maybe the true state of charge is 97%. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to reset some car status here. Trip in for here. And then we start the test. Okay, we start by checking the weight of the car. This should be less than 2000 kilograms. Or, um, Wait, I think I'm a little bit uh, misplaced here. Wait, maybe I should go slightly more forward. There, there. 22, oh, slightly lighter than uh, Brabus. We are on the move, so today we have nice weather. 13 degrees Celsius. Uh, not sure about the wind, but uh, yeah, spring is definitely here, finally. But yeah, so I don't know if you noticed something here. Hmm, we have Tesla style user interface. The speedometer and all the driving information is shown on the top of the screen here. This is a vertical screen. And pretty much uh, everything is controlled via the screen. Here you can adjust side mirrors. You can open the glove box. And I uh, don't remember this other stuff you, <laughs> you have to do via screen. So uh, yeah, so far I'm missing. And also car status is a bit uh, hidden in here. So here we see so far, uh, we have to look at, no, that's from home, but this, yeah, this is the last reset. So this, I will try to uh, determine the battery capacity. So yeah, uh, well, look at this. So we even have auto lane change. So if I do this, well, we have at least stocks, right? Okay, no, see there? Then it changes lane for you and you can see, oh, but when it finishes, it doesn't wear shit, okay. You can see also in the in the use of it. I keep hands on steering wheel. Okay, so changing lanes. Okay, so we have auto lane change, but you have to keep the hand on the steering wheel. <laughs> well, let me let me let's see what happens if I let off. Okay, now it's changing lane. If I let off the steering wheel, well, it's still finished. <laughs> so okay, that's nice, very nice, yeah. So I have to cruise 122 kilometers per hour to match 120. I have to double check again. Usually the tires, they might heat up a bit and then, yeah, what's gonna happen now in the merge? Uh, it does it, uh, fine, yeah. Oh, oh, but it does this merge, yeah. So this is the Volvo style um, auto steer where it tends to hug the, the, this, the right side in this curve and then in the left curve here, it tends to hug towards the middle, just like the, all the other Volvos I tried. So uh, yeah, 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 you can kind of see it here. So, and also sometimes the steering wheel goes a bit jigglish, so mm, maybe not the best. And to activate cruise control, you have to use the gear selector stock. There's a cruise control thing there, but then uh, for the first time, or when you want to reactivate it uh, from start, but then when you resume, you use this button, but yeah, not many cars, they will have uh, this solution here. Tesla has it, 
and also some Chinese cars. But yeah, I like this that uh, it uses Google for navigation. So we see a percent estimation at arrival. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, Rutsugda. So yeah, just like a Polestar and the other Volvos, uh, this is top-notch stuff since it uses Google. All right, we're done with the test. 248 watt hour per kilometer. Well. It is probably the most efficient Volvo. <laughs> okay, but um, distance is 144.3 reported. Uh, real distance is 146. So this car underreports by 1.2%. So the real consumption is 245 watt hour per kilometer. Then, yeah, when I say watt hour per kilometer, it says 24.8 kilowatt hour per hundred kilometer. That equals to 248 watt hour per kilometer. In case you don't know, if you do the math. Well, okay, let's try the 90 test then. How efficient will this boxy car be? Hmm. Okay, and this time I want to cruise at 93 kilometers per hour. The problem is that in order to increase the speed by one kilometers per hour, you have to press and hold this button. They, they go up and down by five if you just press it like this. Uh, but, okay, but uh, wait, you see, the, um, okay, let me just show you the problem here. It lags and it doesn't register my clicks. So if I press and hold, no, no, I need 93. Okay, press and hold. There, there. Oh yeah, that was lucky. But then sometimes I'm not lucky, and then uh, I, I press. No, come on. No, 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 92. No, no, I press and hold. No, 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 95. No, no, no. Go down. No, 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 you see, and I keep digging around like, to try to find the speed. And not only that, but it misregisters. So let me show you. When you click, you see that, you even see the thing pop up there. But it doesn't register that I click, or, or I mean, it registers, obviously, but it doesn't react to it. This is super annoying. When you click, you can even hear me click, and nothing happens. What? Are you serious? Pre uh, I don't know. Maybe I, I'm not supposed to just go. Is it? And then after I clicked, you, it starts registering stuff. Like if there is like a, a scroll, uh, what is that? What's it called? A, a buffer that uh, fills up. I, I don't know. But yeah, um, as long as you don't use the cruise control, then uh, you will not be annoyed by this. Wait, huh? What? I'm press. I'm pressing it now. Seriously? Okay, 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 whatever. I'll stop bitching. Well, we just turn around and we are on the way back now. So, you know, I was looking through the settings here and I noticed that range estimated was set to certified, which is the fixed rate. So you see a 97 kilometers rate, if you switch over to dynamic, it then drops to half <laughs> okay i should have uh, put it on dynamic then which is a more realistic uh, well this is i think this is a gum based whereas this is the the fixed rate based on the constant all right result from the 90 test 185 watt hour per kilometer so it's 183 corrected yeah i guess that's uh, as expected okay and we have 13 percent left so we have to drive a little bit more before we uh, uh can figure out how many kilowatt hour we have Okay, back on the road, and uh, now I don't want to rush, I just slow poke and see where we end up. Uh, maybe at Ayonte, maybe somewhere else. But uh, you see, this car uh, will also preheat the battery if we navigate to Ionity or any fast charger. So I see on car scanner, well, it's kind of hard to see the numbers, but yeah, the battery is at 26 degrees Celsius. It keeps it at around 25 to 30 degrees Celsius. So, um, at least uh, there is no need to preheat nowadays when it's nice and warm outside. 16 degrees Celsius, yeah. Canadians, they will be wearing shorts by now. But uh, I'm gonna show you something uh, interesting here. If you go to this screen and then settings and then driving, and then scroll down a bit, you have one pedal drive. But um, here we have performance all wheel drive. So when you enable this, Supposedly you get uh, better performance. Uh, I noticed that uh, in this performance mode, when you floor it, it becomes more instant rather than this, this half second delay and ramp up, artificial ramp up. Uh, but also in this mode, region is reduced. 
there's very little regen, even if we have the one pedal drive active. So, yeah, but during acceleration test, I use this performance mode, of course, but I would assume that this mode maybe uh, engages both the front and rear motors constantly, whereas when we are cruising with without the mode, then maybe it tries to save some energy and become uh, efficient. Wait, I just noticed. Fin fam fail. No, I, um, Apparently it's 120 zone here. <laughs> Any Norwegian will understand what the problem is. In Norway, the highest speed limit is 110 kilometers per hour. So um, where the heck did they get the 120 from? Hmm? China? We have right at the supercharger and man, it is tight between the stalls here. I wonder if Tesla designed these slots uh, so that the Cybertruck can fit in here or not. Probably not. Uh, well, we have 360 camera. Well, pretty much all other brands except Tesla has it nowadays. But guess what? Tesla got matrix light not long time ago. <laughs> but okay, okay, let's uh, see now. We have 3% and 7 kilometers left. And then let me see here. Okay, so the start. Oh, no, no, okay. This is where you have to, in order to see all the battery status, you have to go here and then here in the trip bit. Okay, here. So I'm gonna crunch all these numbers together and figure out how many kilowatt hour we have. Wow, well, we actually have 65.4 kilowatt hour. That is 2.3 kilowatt hour more than the smart. But you know, the smart didn't like going deep when we charge it, it went quite slow. What about the Volvo? Hmm. But look, and the Volvo, the charge port is on the left side with the right side, not the right side with the wrong side. So this is perfect when you are charging a Tesla because then you're not using the wrong stalls. So uh, let's see, let's use this stall. Wait, why is the plug all over here? Okay, whatever. All right, how fast are we charging? Well, we don't know because this car doesn't show you how many kilowatt, doesn't even show you how many kilometers per hour we are taking. Well, you can see in the app that we're taking 19 kilowatt. Oh shit, Ugh. What, what about the car scanner? Yeah, car scanner also reports 19 kilowatt. Okay, so it is as smart as the other. Brabus then. Oh yeah, after a couple of minutes, we are now taking 153 kilowatt. So this is supposed to be faster than the hashtag one, hashtag three. Well, we'll see in the 1000 km challenge, will the Volvo be faster than the Smart? Okay, now we're gonna do a sound test. This is a bit unusual setup. So I have the Rode Wireless Pro microphone and now I'm recording in stereo. So you can hear that I'm, if I move here, you see? Okay, so the microphones, they've been attached to the uh, wise, sun visors. I think that should give a good enough stereo perspective. And then, since this car cannot read USB stick to play music, I have to use my phone and then, well, it then transfers via Bluetooth, so I don't know what kind of uh, codec they use, but we at least get some impression of the Harman Kardon system. So play the first song here. Okay, they, they 
don't show with the title anything here. This is uh, Light Boys on the Runaway. Harman Kardon, but uh, many Harman Kardon I tried, they uh, they have a little bit weak bass here. I think the bass is more than strong enough. So, yeah, typically in sound system where the bass is too weak or you're lacking deep bass, you can't just use the EQ to push it out. It, they, they will then introduce distortion. But when you have a system like this, then you can at least tune it down uh, to your uh, taste. But, okay, okay, let me test something else. I have to test for clipping. This is something, it will clip in the, wow, it starts shaking even, holy shit. So, let me test clipping. It plays quite loud and almost with no distortion. But then, uh, I was about to say, it, it might clip in the camera, but that's because the camera, the microphone, cannot capture all of this. Well, I'm, I am recording 32-bit float here, so I could bring it out, but whatever. So, but overall, good stuff, man. Okay, when it comes to range, this Volvo might not be the best. In the same price range, you can actually get a Tesla Model 3 long range, which charges faster, has more range, better efficiency. But I think people who are looking for the Volvo, they just don't want anything with Tesla. Well, you get some Tesla stuff like the old touchscreen thing and the minimalistic design. But at least you have different seats, different steering wheel. You actually have stocks. So yeah, I'm starting to understand the hype now about this Volvo. But I'm a little bit disappointed in the soundproofing and also, well, that it is a bit inefficient. But then what can you do with that, right? But overall, though, it is a good car. So yeah, um, good stuff. But I need to test, test more about this car. So that's going to be it for now. hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.